such a disappointing piece of garbage. <coughs> all right, I'll take that opportunity. I, we're all okay? <laughs> Sartorial issues. Okay, so, uh, right, exam one is out of the way. Challenge level one is out of the way. Uh, that will come back on Thursday with assignment three. So we're into this second four-week block. It may become four and a half weeks. This is a longer semester than the full one, which I'm used to, so it may stretch a little bit. We'll see. Um, and this is, a, this, this is a tough section, but it is a glorious section, right? So there's going to be pain and suffering. This is what you are promised in mathematics, and this is what you are getting, right? Anyone who tells you it's easy is lying, All right? Or is particularly malicious, actually. So, okay, so I'm going to be upfront about it. All right, uh, so no office hours today. Uh, crazy things are happening. <coughs> That's just a 45 minute piece, but otherwise, normal things. So, journey to the center of AX equals B. Yes, we thought we did everything. We got to this LU piece. That was helping computers, which eventually will own us. So, you know, tricky situation, a bit awkward. Um, uh, that, was, that, was, that was all good. But it turns out we can understand things much more deeply. And we will have to talk about these things, vector spaces. If I was besotted with pure mathematics, I would talk about them a lot, but that's not going to happen. Pure mathematicians will be very upset with me, but we'll talk about it just enough. We live in the real world, There's, but we'll still talk about n dimensions, but we'll talk about Euclidean space, right? Okay. This is a, we'll have a few definitions here. We'll talk about subspaces. So vector spaces inside vector spaces kind of idea. Very good. And then it turns out that this whole AX equals B thing there are four spectacular subspaces involved. We'll get to it. Uh, we'll, we should get to two of them today. They will, be, they will pop out for us. And then there are two more hidden ones that come soon. So this is really cool. Um, it's very neat, very tidy. So we're going from AX equals B to UX equals C. And we understood that this had this LU structure, right? So we kind of took a departure here to help the computers um, <coughs> who serve us now, but we will serve them one day. Rx equals d is where we're going now. And we did a bit of this early on. We went to this reduced row echelon form. So you had a delightful precursor for that. Uh, and that's where we're going. That is a uh, sad looking R. All right. OK, uh, let's see. So there are a couple of things online. Uh, let me show you things, just a few things. And then we'll scribble on the board. You see that? Oh, yeah. So we had this big paper come out yesterday. It's a nice UVM story. Um, as you know, Vermont, we're all happy and good people. So we wrote this paper. It turns out to be that uh, looking at 10 languages, Arabic, Korean, English, Spanish in Mexico, Portuguese in Brazil, they have this positive bias. So there are more positive words than negative words. And you have to think about the way they're used. But we did a very detailed analysis. It involves jellyfish plots. Uh, our good friend Josh Brown wrote a piece about us here. And it's F-bombs notwithstanding, all languages skew towards happiness. So lots of pick up around the world on this. There's uh, NPR pieces and Bloomberg and you know, people writing in from uh, all over the place. All right. Anyway, and if you like, this is one of our big projects. I work on a lot of different things. But you can play around with this, right? So this is uh, what we call the hedonometer. You can look at this is Twitter, right? So this is uh, happiness as measured from tweets, this crazy thing we do uh, for the last, well, actually 2009. So now we have a bunch of other things in there. You can look at um, Spanish. But it's Mexico, so that's important. It's Mexico. This is when Mexico lost to the Netherlands 2-1 in the World <laughs> Cup. And they said, so we have these elaborate things here. You can share them and embed them and do all sorts of things. These are like sophisticated word clouds, word clouds for grown-ups, right? Um, and they are a bit hard to understand. But basically, there are a lot of nasty words in here. You can translate them. I will resist pushing this button. But there are a lot of bad things were said. Um, you know, and, and, and so generally, 
right. So you see all sorts of things. This is, this is uh, Charlie Hebdo. I mean, this is a terrible thing. This is France. This is French tweets coming from France. Um, you see we have less data for, for uh, overseas. We have all sorts of things. This is, uh, this, geography, this is the geography of happiness. Um, ridiculously, look at Vermont, just, just crushing it. Just crushing it. <laughs> this is by the people, this is the tweets that come out of Vermont, right? So there's someone who's written a butt. But family, amazing chance, please thank Mountain. Obviously, lots of snow and skiing. That's not a bad thing to be talking about. So it's a small, a small state, so you, know, you can get those glitches. Uh, unfortunately, down the bottom is Louisiana. And, and it turns out, measuring things from tweets, it matches up with uh, Gallup polls and all sorts of other stuff. So yeah. we're going to talk about this. OK, we're going to talk about this. <laughs> no, so, this, so the instrument that we use is a general one, right? So we don't have a, a version for Texans versus people from Vermont. So, Snow is generally considered to be, when you present it to people, a good thing. So we throw out words that have a big uh, range of opinions, right? So some words, so alcohol, swear words, various other things. How to run countries, capitalism, socialism. People have hugely varying opinions on those, so we can't really use those. But uh, a lot of words, you know, people are fairly sure about. You know, at one end there's paradise and happiness and laughter, and the other end is, you know, bad words. All right, so there's a lot more, and this is just a bananas thing. But it's a very serious business. We're trying to create something like the GDP, but from, for well-being, you can use it for corporations. Journalists can use this. Yeah? I can talk about this forever, by the way. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, we totally made this up. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a uh, organic creation, a locally crafted um, Vermont um, bit of madness. We actually, we've been getting 10% of all tweets from Twitter since 2008. We wrote to them. There was only four of them there. And we said, this looks like fun. And they said, oh, we have this little research beat. So, and of course, it's like now we're trying to like put them in boxes. It's a disaster. But, um, but you're saying, what do we do? What's the question? We have a big feed of tweets, basically. Yeah. No, we have, we have, a, we have a huge. So the Vermont Advanced Computing Center has a huge number of tweets <laughs> sitting there. It has other valuable information, but it also has 10% of all tweets ever made. Which is a lot. Uh, we have a lot of the geo tweets. Uh, all right, one last thing. So we're putting up lots of projects. So we have books. Right, so you take a book, you, you slide a window through the book, you do the silliest thing in the world, you take the first 10,000 words, get a score for them, s keep sliding it through. And so this is Frankenstein. Um, you know, we have classics in here, so things, science says it ends badly, right? So, right, so the, these are the negative words at the end, death and miserable enemy and so on. And some of these words will be a little funny, like the word sick, for example. You know, it doesn't mean what people think. Harry Potter is here. Uh, Prison of Azkaban actually ends kind of well because the whole serious black thing, you know, I've got a dad, it's great. Um, but you can... Uh, so there are a bit of there's some spoilers in here, right? So this is that is the end of Dumbledore, right there, <laughs> and that is, as you might guess, the the lowest point. So there's you know death, killed, lying, funeral, die, horrible, tears, badly wounds. You know the texture is there. So we're doing a very simple-minded thing. We're just chopping these books up into little pieces, and it turns out that you can kind of get a score out of that that makes sense. All right. So lots of fun things. You can there are different languages. Count of Monte Cristo, that's a good one. So this is in French. The little translate thing, so you can translate them and translate them back. So one of the ones that ends on an upswing. We're doing movies, which is kind of fun, um, which will be super fun, actually. So we, we're getting movies to come out soon. Uh, yeah, tons of, tons of good stuff. The scripts are a bit hard to get. Sometimes we have old scripts. So I, we had Alien, and I'm looking through it, trying to understand the, you know, it's ending in a certain way, and I look at the actual words, because this is the thing we're going to have for movies. The script will be rolling up and down here as you move through. We have a prototype of this. And you'll be able to annotate it so people can annotate what happened, which is kind of fun. Turns out in an early one, Ripley, what, alien fans? Ripley was not, was a guy, right? And I'm like, what is going on? And it turns out it was an early draft. So we can't get the, it looks like we can't get the actual draft. Anyway, torrenters. Okay. Yeah, sure. So this is all linked to, and the main site is hedonometer.org.
hedonometer.org. It tweets, of course, it tweets as at hedonometer, tweets away, has a little tweety. Um, yeah, so this is an elaborate thing. I do a lot of other things, but this is one big, big piece, and we're trying to make, you know, we're trying to make this thing useful. So uh, we're building a new thing called panometer. So we're going to measure everything. I can tell you about that some other time. Anyway, we've got lots of press, and we're interviews and madness. Okay. Happens now and then, and we're very grateful. But my voice is wrecked. Yeah, here's, here's so we, here's a basic science result. This is the ordering of 24 corpora, because there's no one particular corpus for any language, right? So you have to say, I'm going to take the New York Times for some period of time, or music lyrics, some patch of them. I'm going to take tweets for Russian and whatever. So you see Spanish, again, rated in more, um, um, this is the distribution of these words, these 5,000 words in each corpus. There, the yellow part shows you the positive words. So there's a bias. There are more positive words than negative ones. It's true for all of them. There is an ordering. You can order it, but um, you know, the, the general story is this positivity bias. All right. Lots of funds with figures. Okay, okay, okay. Stop. Okay, good. All right, so we actually have a course, and um, this is the thing we're going to understand in this four or five weeks that we work on. The fourfold ways of AX equals B, and I, just, I was just saying we have RX, Rx equals D is the thing we can always turn these AX equals B problems into. Um, they will turn out to have four characteristic shapes. We'll understand it in this big picture, and we'll really deeply understand this number of solutions business. Okay, so it's okay. These things come in slowly. There are some silly things, more silly things. Oh, I, this is really wrong. Um, so you can look at that later on. Um, <coughs> I think there could be stuff from the Colosseum and, yeah, okay. So uh, I schedule these tweets, right? So they come in. <laughs> I surprise myself. Uh, I think that's what we're doing. All right, so you'll get assignment four on Thursday. Okay. How are we doing? Good? All right, let's do some more things. You know, right on the board. Okay. Cool. <coughs> All right, matrices, okay. <coughs> okay, so um, onwards, we have with AX equals B, all the way. So we're going to, so we need to uh, kind of think about vector spaces. Not too much, as I said, just enough, just the right amount. You can make your head explode with these things. Um, <coughs> okay, so let's go back to this again. Uh, the column picture, which we kind of left a little bit, right? I told you we had this column picture story. But now it really is going to come into view. So let's say we have this guy. Let's think about this. Three, I'm going to give you a couple. I'll just make them up. Zero, one, zero. Two zero four uh, zero, and we have B equals this two one three. So imagine we have this case as well. We just have the first two parts one one zero, and then we have another one. So example one, example two, example three, and we're going to have three zero two one one zero minus one zero four, and then I don't know five two three. So this is a um, Three by four, right? It's always three rows, four columns. Two by four, very easy to get that wrong. Three by three. B, of course, is a three by one. And in this case, this, let me make sure, we always have this. We're going to use these basic um, letters that we use for, right, number of rows and columns, really, really crucial. And if I flashed that picture up before very quickly, but M, N, and a third number which we'll call R, little r, will matter tremendously. So just the shape and then another special letter. All right. So this is a sort of a tall and skinny one. This is a wider one. What are we doing when we look at the column picture? So we're saying AX equals B. So this will be, in this case, let's get the columns out. It's X1 times 302, right, plus X2 times 110 plus x3, so I'm just reorienting ourselves, we're going to, so this is 
the idea here, this one, we only have two columns. So I'm trying to get this um, uh, intuition for you again so that this last one, well, it really depends what, what's in the columns, but at first glance you think, okay, there are four columns. You should be able to kind of make more stuff out of that, right? More instruments. You could, of course, end up with three violas or four violas, and that's, depending on your musical choice, a crime against humanity or, um, okay. <coughs> My wife's a viola, so I get to say these jokes. Okay, so, uh, so, so we have, if you like, three instruments. That's the instruments, two instruments, and four, four instruments. So we're trying to find, when we, when we solve AX equals B, we say, okay, we want to get to this B. We want to be able to figure out what these Xs are that we can combine these vectors to get this guy, right? So it's going to be potentially harder here. We only have two things to work with. Maybe easier here, and maybe easier here even still. But we have to be careful. But that's the idea. That's what we're trying to think about this, right? So let me, let me write this down. Right, so we solve AX equals B. So again, we know this, we don't know this, we know this guy. It is awesome. This is really great. Right, for X, right, to find out how we combine, I want to write this down, combine uh, vectors of A. So the column, let me write properly, column vectors of A, a mad person wrote these notes, okay, it was me, to create, think of it like this, create, generate, um, reach is another way to think of it, B. This is our, right, these are, these are instruments, individual, and you know, this is not exactly how it works, but I'm just trying to give you a sort of an illustrious thing. B, um, no, illustrative, B. So this is the music. We're trying to make that. You play this, you play this, you play this. All right. So one way to keep, to really, really understand what's going on here, to understand, we want to understand what happens when we have these different shapes. There's this problem with maybe zero solutions or one solution or infinitely many solutions. We've touched on it, but we have not fully understood it. This will help us understand everything, right? So, so our, uh, our goal is to understand where uh, these guys live, where X, B, and the columns of A live. Columns and rows of A live rows of A live, right? Which spaces do they live in, right? So, and very importantly, you know, where they can be, where they can't be. Key, where they can be and where they can't be. Right, you're trying to make a symphony and someone just brought a bongo or a bong, whatever, you, yeah? That's not going to work out for you, right? Mozart is going to be very unhappy. So, you know, that, there's a sense that a B is in this big space and you've brought just a column vector that's, you yeah, know, it's a kazoo. It's not good, right? So you're going to need a little more. And we should be able to, once we, once we look at A, we're, we're going to say, okay, this is what A is made out of. And this is what you're trying to get me to do when you say solve AX equals B. And I'm going to be able to say pretty quickly, yes, you can do that. No, you can't do that. <coughs> so much fun. All right. Now, <coughs> vector spaces. Very silly. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to give you a couple of rules to understand things, and then we're off to trying to get to these two spaces that I've promised you. Null space. I haven't said the words. 
One of them is going to be called null space, which is to do with death. And the other one will be column space, which is life. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I'm, tr I'm trying people to, yeah. Okay, so overreaching. All right, so let's see. Um, okay, so let's do something very, it's this, this going to seem very simple, uh, probably. Uh, so let's think, we're going to use a bit of notation. Think about all vectors in two dimensions. in uh, the idealized plane, the one that lives only in pure mathematicians' heads, plane. Um, we'll call it R2. What do I call it? I guess I call it R2, like this, R2. So here it is. <coughs> Boom. We've got this guy. And we've got some vector in here. Let's call this x. Let's call this y. And this is some uh, vector v in here. Very simple, right? We have a zero point. That's, that's a crucial aspect. There's a zero vector. And we can start to think, well, what happens if we have two vectors here and we add them together? So we'll call it v1, v2. Uh, did I do that right? So v1 plus v2. <laughs> so the basic idea uh, observation is v1 plus v2 is still in R2, R squared, right? So let me just show you one other thing here. R equals the real numbers, the real numbers. Right, so real numbers here, real numbers here. R squared is then the, that notation, if you haven't seen it, means uh, the plane. So R cubed is three dimensions. Uh, so pretty simple thing, right? So if we add these two things together, they're still in this plane. We can't somehow add two finite vectors and get an infinite one. This is not a crazy thing. But it turns out, you know, when you're doing some math and so on, you have to be very, very careful with your definition. All right. So, okay. So there's two somewhat, this is a very dangerous word, right? But let's try it. Somewhat obvious. We may have written a book about that. I may have given them the title. Anyway, so um, somewhat obvious aspects of vector space. So first of all, so this is here's uh, our R two example. We'll call it. We'll say this. We're going to say v v equals like this x y, um, and I, I write this in different ways. This is x, y are elements of the real numbers. It's a funny looking thing, but very important notation, right? So you're going to actually use this kind of notation a lot. Slightly different thing. So let's unpack it a little bit. So these are uh, two by one vectors. This is the real numbers. And this could be where or such that. You can have that sort of thing. OK, so we're going to have every pair of numbers, basically every pair of numbers, such that an x and y can be anything you want. And that describes this whole plane. Right? So this is an important key notation. Really, this is a set. Right, so the curly brackets, it's a set. Right, so very simple. All right, so let's, uh, let's kind of expand from that. Okay, so here are our two things. So this is our, this is our um, example here. So one, if we add, I mean, I feel pain, painfully silly writing this. If we add any two vectors, And I'm giving you one vector space, but we could think of you know, R3, R4, R5, fine. Yep. Any two vectors in V together, the result is still in V. You can't pop out of it. 
Right, so a simple example would be 3 and 7 plus, I don't know, minus 4 and 8 equals, right, still, it's still the same kind of object, 15, V1, let's call this V1, this is V2, and this is V3, or V1 plus V2. It's good. Fine. So that's one thing. And the other is if we multiply... So this is two, 1 and then 2. If we multiply um, any vector v, wow, I really feel silly, in v by a scalar c, and c, we, we're going to say c is a real number, any real number, some tiny little ridiculous details that we'll talk about here. Again, I just want to say this again, real number. Real number. Then, so we can mod we multiply by some number. Then, C V, C times this vector V is still in. I need a little hat. Is still in uh, V. You can't stretch it or multiply by negative one and make it go out the other way. You can't get it outside of your space. Right. So, seven and seven. This guy times 7, that's really silly of me, 1 and 2 equals 7, 14, right? So this is C, V, this is still in V. Right, right, we've, we've written it down, had to do it. Um, okay, <coughs> okay, so the kind of more abstract notation would be, uh, so 1 would be X1, uh, y1 plus x2, y2. You'd have to kind of do this. You'd have to prove it in general. y1 plus y2 is L amount of v. That's still in v. And c times x1, y1 is equal to c. I really feel so. C, y1, which is an element of v. All right, so we're starting off slowly. We have a triumphant takeoff after this. So... How could go, this go wrong? So if you think about the plane, totally fine, right? Any two vectors in here, you add them together, good. Um, I'm going to add, I'll give you a third, I'll give you a third criterion. And there are like 10, which is kind of nuts, but um, I'll give you the three big important ones. And I'll get beaten up by mathematicians in an alley later on. They're pretty scary when you talk about the theorems. Um, <coughs> okay. All right. So, a third thing. Look, there's a three. Okay, good. Let's get rid of that. So, number three is that zero is an element of V. That's a groovy thing. So, that's, that's going to be our third criterion. So 0, 0 is in R2. I mean, just really silly. OK. But it's important. You need that 0 in there. You can't not have it. And you can see how this will work, right? So if we multiply 1 by 0 over here, we, we, we just choose 0. 0 times this guy. 0, 0. It's there. OK. And then, so that's the, this is the main 3. Main three um, uh, requirements. We're being very, very, very careful because we're afraid of things. Went three requirements. Uh, there are a bunch more um, of kind of minor, increasingly obvious nature. Now, yes, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Now. There are other worlds of math where this will matter and you have to go off into them. Increasingly obvious nature. Um, this is uh, explore at your leisure, which I know I am inviting you to. Yep. These are the ones we're going to focus on. All right, so let's think of some things. Let, let me just ask you a couple of questions. So what about this? What about this guy? So here's an example. That's a little side note there. Just dismissing the whole thing. Um, so what about this? We've got y here. 
x here, and this is kind of a subspace idea. So we're going to remove all of these, and we'll say, uh, what about is v equal to this? v equal to all x and y, such that, I'm going to, well, let me do it like this, such that um, x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is anything. So this is the right half plane. Did I write that correctly? So it's everything out here. So these guys, Whoop. all these vectors. And vectors along the axes here, that's cool too. So is this a vector space by this bunch of criteria we've put down? Is V a vector space? So if it's a vector space, you have to show it, ha it agrees with these three criteria, that if you take any arbitrary vector inside V and add it to another arbitrary one, you still get a vector inside V. If you multiply it by any number, you still, you still get a vector inside V. And zero is in there. So let's check. So we'll call, let me, let me add a thing here. So, um, yeah. Let me write it like this. I'm going to call this vector space property one. Let me write it like that. So you can go back to vector space property two. Use this disturbing short color. Vector space property three. Uh, vector space, vector space, property three. All right. So is zero in, so we can check them out. Is zero in this, sub, in this space? Yeah, okay, so, so we'll check. So vector space property three, zero is in V. Yes? If we add any two vectors, and we, you know, you have to sort of write this down mathematically, but if we take any two vectors in here and add them together, will they still be in V? See, it's exciting, isn't it? I know this is exciting. We just got to take our medicine here, people. Can you see? Is can you think? All you have to do is think of an example where it doesn't work. Can you think of two vectors you could add together such that they wouldn't? I'm just do this visually. Looks good, right? Vector space. Uh, that's uh, number one. Uh, looks good. We'd have to prove it, but it looks good. But basically, what you'd have to show is that if you add two numbers that are at least what it really is, is if you add two numbers that are at least zero, then they're still at least zero. Okay. What about the other one? Yes. So C is any number, you can, you can choose any C. Right, so if you choose, let's say we have, so vector space two, uh, property two. So let's say, let's choose uh, x, y equals 1, 0. Multiply that by. So if you multiply by 2, let's, let's draw a thing. Yeah, right. OK, so here it is. It's here. This is 1, right, x and y. Boom, yep. c equals minus 1, toast. Yes? Good. So C can be any, right, it's a real number, anything from minus infinity to infinity. Good. So, you know, it's a slightly delicate thing. It didn't explode completely. It was actually okay for two of them. Yeah? And you had to be a little careful because you're like, no, that's not a whatever, and you sort of have to mess around with the definitions. Okay. So that's one example. And it breaks on only one of the criteria that we listed as being important. Exa example two, it's kind of a good one. Oh yeah, what about all points V is uh, equals all points on the axes? On the, ugh, on the um, axes in R2. So it's a bit of a funny thing to draw, but basically here's X and Y. So everything here. Right, so here's a vector, that's inside it, this guy's inside it, this one's inside it. 
zero is inside it, but none of these. So zero is inside it, so let's do that one. Vector space property three, check, that's a zero. What about, I'll give them in the wrong order of course, vector space property two, the one that we just failed on. So if I take a vector here and multiply it by a number, take a vector here and multiply it by any number, will it still be in this little space? Right? Yeah, because you're just going to dial it this way or this way. Okay, so that one's okay. Uh, but you just need one example. Right, so vector space property three is a fail because we could add one zero plus zero one equals one one. So add these two together, it pops out. Right, so it's not contained, it's not closed. What's that? Oh, 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 yes, this is, I wrote three there, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Chalk, okay, <coughs> the chalk did it. All right, no, no, it's my fault. Uh, okay, so a little fiddly, a bit funny, but then, you know. All right, people, let's, uh, let's save the day. So, so that's good. And actually, something, something we've kind of just touched on here, these are, these are clearly subspaces, right, that we're kind of starting to look at here. These are, these are within a space. Okay, so, yeah. So, in general, for us, the vector spaces we're interested in are zero dimensions, one dimension, two dimension, three dimensions, four dimensions. It's just a simple guy. So, so for us, uh, the V's of interest will be simple. What we'll call R0, R1, R2, R3, Rn. Right? Just these nice big vector spaces. R0, that's just this sad little character here. It's a bit tricky, actually. But yeah, that's, that's true. Um, and this is just any number, <coughs> C. Right? And then these guys are, this is X and Y. I mean, if we want to use in the kind of way we've talked about, and this would be X, Y, Z, or X1, X2, X3. That's the notation we'll use. Right? So just any of these things. So the thing we're really interested in is th we have these guys as the subspaces, the things that could live inside these. So the big deal for us will be subspaces. Whoop, subspaces. Okay, so let's get these together. So these are spaces that live inside vector spaces could have done that, yeah. And then I'll tell you about some funny other vector spaces because there's some oddness. Okay, so, so this is a crucial observation, crucial to your happiness. Uh, right, we're just building a little foundation here. Yep, yep. Vector spaces can have, and always, always can, certainly do, uh, have, let's say have, smaller vector spaces inside them. So let's say we have a set of points. Right, we call these subspaces. And we're going to de denote them by this. So we'll denote, I know I really want to get to the next bit, denote by S. All right. We're going to have S's. So if we really truly have a vector space, and I said there are these other properties that I'm not going to tell you about, all you need to prove to yourself or sh demonstrate. So S is, is those three properties we've talked about already. So S 
So here's a... Um, uh, conditions. Uh, S is a subspace of V if the three main conditions hold. Hold. So the other, so that just as we did, so the other ones, the other ones I ignored, ones that were kind of, uh, were not talked about, are inherited. Right, so the fact that it's living inside this space means these other things work. Talked about uh, inherited effectively, right? Okay, bad run, bad run. Okay, so let's do it. And it's going to be this. It's just going to be uh, uh, property subspace one. So property subspace one, same sort of thing. So if uh, x um, and y are in, this is going to seem silly, s, uh, x plus y is in s, uh, probably of subspace 2, probably subspace 3, if uh, x is in s, then c times x is in s. Is this notation okay? This is a, an element of. We have some funny things. This is in S. Uh, let me do this one just for fun. Element of R. So this is for all. Crazy. And R0 is in S as well. The zero vector. So if you can show those three things, which we really, we, we just... We really basically just did this, actually. Yeah. Then you can, sh you can see it's a subspace. OK, so <coughs> another example would be, let's say, let's take this one. So we've got just x and y. We're in R2. Um, x, and let's make that 1 and minus 1. So this is y equals x. This is y equals x plus 1. And there's zero, of course. Zero is here. Zero is doing its zeroness. Which one of these is a subspace? Totally frame the question. Which one could be a subspace? So what's yeah? What's the problem with this? There's a problem with this. It doesn't have zero, right? So the, so this one is just immediately out. So this is uh, no good, no zero, no good. It's just out. And you can, st you can start to see what will happen. So if you add two vectors here, they're going to bounce straight out of it. Right? It's not good. This one, add two vectors inside this guy, they're going to stay inside that one. So this is a very simple example of the kinds of things that will work as subspaces for the vector spaces we're thinking about. So in 2D, it has to be a line through the origin. Right? It has to be a line. If we're talking about a simple, uh, there are actually two other examples. But um, right? so as soon as you move the line off the origin, it's no good. If you have a set of points that curve in any way, that's no good, right? It has to be a one-dimensional thing. So in 2D, the only subspaces are lines through the origin There are two other subspaces. What are they? Zero or R zero. This is another horrendously silly kind of subspace. So if you had just so just a point, yeah, yeah. So so a point will uh, have trouble with this one because it has to have zero inside it. 
Yeah, so it blows up. And you can always take that point and add it to itself, and that would be over here. Yeah, so you could dial it. It's a bit. It's a. It's a trick. This is sort of a peculiar one. Everything. Yes. <coughs> and R two. Everything. Very good. So it's always true for these things that the subspace could be zero or the whole thing. Fine. Okay. Uh, so in 3D, subspaces are, for us, lines through the origin. Same idea. Right, what else would happen here? So planes through the origin, right? So planes through the origin, good. So let me draw a picture here. This is going to be every possible this character here. Planes through the origin, good. Through the origin, and then again, R0 and R3 itself. Okay, good, all right. So planes through the origin. See, hard to draw. A zero, everything you want. You can cut it up in lots of different ways, as long as they go through zero. Fine. So that's kind of our basic plan. And then there's going to be this funny thing where we're going to divide R3 and R4 and R5 into two subspaces. They're going to be able to be built out of two subspaces. Just as sort of a prelude, this is a fine subspace by itself, right? The y-axis. That's OK. And the x-axis is a good subspace by itself. And if you add them together, in a sense, you can get all of R2. So that's what we're going to be doing. OK. You can divide into many subspaces, potentially, but we'll be wanting to split nice, big, happy vector spaces into two subspaces. That's kind of right. coming. Yes? Yes, they have to be straight lines. So. We're just doing this very simple thing. The vector space is just there. R1, R2, R3, R4. Right. Right, so every, if you have a little bit of a curve here, right, so if you have a little bit of a curve, then you could take this vector and this vector and this vector and start adding them together. They'd go off the line. Or just dial one, go straight up. So they're very, they're not very <laughs> exciting spaces. Um, OK, there are some funny ones. You can start to think about some funny vector spaces. Not even the crazy ones that <laughs> people do in pure math. Sometimes thinking about them just because they exist, or exist here, right? Yeah. <coughs> OK, let's, uh, I'm going to try this. Can I do this? <sighs> Look at that, delicious. <coughs> These are just, we'll just think about vector space a little more. Good, yeah, oh yeah, good. So we could have, so peculiar vector spaces. This is sort of an aside, but just so you know there's more. They all ultimately kind of look like R1, R2, R3, R4, but let's say, so here's an example. Um, polynomials of order two. So this is a bit odd. Polynom so these are polynomials of order two. So here we go. Here's f1 of x equals, I don't know, 3 plus 2x plus 6x squared. f2 of x equals minus 1 plus 4x minus 2x squared. You're going to add these guys together. You still get another function. Right? f1 plus f2. <coughs> That's OK. So this would be vector space property one, um, some multiple of one of them, still a polynomial, so that's cool. Vector space polynomial two, and there's a zero here, right? So zero plus zero times x plus zero times x squared. So this is really, it's really, it's, a, it's equivalent to R3, right? You, this is your x-axis, your y-axis, and your z-axis. Just a bit, bit of an odd thing. 
you could have, um, yeah, that's fine. So this, this is strange. So what about matrices? M by N matrices, all M by N matrices. Yes, that's okay too, right? Because you can just say, think of a matrix, um, say we have a, you know, it's M by N, you could repack into an M times N vector. And then, you know, just got to, we're in R. So these things live in, live in R M times N space. This is weird. That's weird. Don't need to think about it too much, but it's true. Uh, you could have three times a donut, anything you want, plus, as long as you do this, four times a, I don't know, campfire, right? As long as this is... These things, that's fine. So you could have donut and donut and campfire space, right? So as long as you can multiply these things by numbers, it's okay. I'm not saying you should do that. Okay. All right. <coughs> yes. What about the integers? Is that a vector? Is that a subspace of R? <laughs> Does that sound good? <laughs> you can think of a bagel, uh, gluten free, I don't know what to say. Okay, so uh, what about the integers? As a subspace of R. The real numbers. Does that work? So if you add an integer to another integer, so z1 plus z2, right? That's still, let's make them like this thing, kind of. So that's kind of okay. This would be subspace property uh, one, uh, zero. It's an in yeah, that's good. So that's okay. Subspace property three. And this one, c times z1. We're toast because C is, can be anything you want, right? Okay. If C is uh, not an integer. So that's important. We had this before. You're allowed to think of C as, C can be anything. It can be a negative number, right? So don't sort of feel constrained from what's, so fails there. Rationals, no good. Okay, all right. <coughs> Numbers beginning with T I have written here. Okay, that's obviously no good. Okay, all right, so. <coughs> wow. <coughs> I have to work on this, but I found in my notes, um, Our Hero A's Journey. Weeks, it's a love story, then there's the plot thickens, and yeah. All right, I'll work on that. Everyone gathers together at the end, Shakespeare, grand finale, yeah. Okay. It's an epic saga. Okay, let's see. <coughs> or a farce. Not sure yet. Okay, let's see. So we have this silly business. We have vector spaces and subspaces. And that's fine. We're, we're just kind of happy with that. Okay. Okay, enough of this. All right, let's do it. So, uh, in general... In general. <coughs> right. So, right. This, sh this space here is a problem. Okay. So, okay. What this means for AX equals B. Okay. So, in general, we have. Right, we have R, uh, M. Let me write this. <laughs> yeah. 
M, R, N. Da, 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 da. So where does B live? So B lives in, right, this is a B1, B2. How many entries in B? This is a terribly confusing thing. M, right, M by N, N by 1, and these guys match, M by 1. To make a clicking noise. Okay. B, M. Doesn't sound good. And this is, lives in R, M. Where M, M is a very meaningful thing. It's the, it's the right number of rows. Number of rows, just to say it again, again, rows in A. Oof, this is, it's exciting. All right. <clears throat> so B lives here. X lives in R N, I hear you say. R N. Okay? And the columns, the last one, the columns of A live in. Where do they live? It's R M or R N? R M? Yeah. In R M. So let's get this uh, picture for ourselves. We'll start, we'll do a little example. So it's AX equals B, right? This is the matrix picture. The column picture is it's X1 times A1 plus X2 times A2 plus XN times AN, right? There are N of these columns and they live in RM n columns. So I know it's very it's kind of a confusing thing. This is equals b. And all of these these are m by 1s. Right? So they live all of these parts, the a's and the b's, a's and b's live in rm. And that's really where the music is, right? That's where the music is. This the x1, x2, they live in a different space. They live in a different space. They live in volume space. Right? This is music space. I'm going to keep going with this. And x lives in some kind of volume space. Volume space. Right? Controls there the dials of how much we want of each each uh, column vector. So let's uh, let's get into an example. Okay. So here's an example. Uh, A equals two one four two, sneaky, and A one equals two one. It's a two. Sorry. <coughs> so from this we have A one is two one, A two is four two. that. Let me put a block here. And I have space over here to draw these things. So th this is just our A. So here is <coughs> it's an important thing. You'll see this as we do it more and more. You'll understand that this is good. But column, column picture uses Y's. Use, uses uh, y sub i's. Okay, we have a 2, 1 and a 4, 2. So let's draw a 2, 1. 2, 1 is here. So this is and 4, 2 is here. You see that? So that's 2, that's 4, that's a 2, that's a 1. So this one here is, this is a 1. And this is A2. So if this is the A you are given, which Bs can you make? Right? They have to live along the subspace defined by that line. Good. So we can see, because it's a small example, right? When we have a 50 by 50, it's messier. We can see 
that uh, AX equals B will only be solvable. This is because it's a small example, right? Because a small example, it's not. Well, we have to figure out how to solve this in general. Will only be solvable if B equals some multiple of C times uh, 2, 1. Or B lives in subspace, in the subspace uh, defined by. Uh, Okay, defined by this, C21, where C is an element of R. Right? So any multiple of 2, 1. Any multiple of 2, 1. Rockets up and down this thing. So that's okay. If B is off there at all, no solutions. What did I say before? Okay. That, th no, these are true, but here we're sort of starting to write out a, a this, is, this is a subspace here, because this is a set. It's a set. So this statement actually here in this little curly brackets is an infinite set of points. This is a, it's, an approx it's close, but this, this actually contains an infinite set of points. Yeah. So, all right, good. And we are going to... Let me write the thing down. Boop, boop, boop. Oh. Two o'clock. Good. This is really exciting. Really exciting, people. Okay. It's kind of lies over here. Some more lies. Um, I don't know why I do that. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. Good. Good, good, good. So there's a subspace. B has to live in a subspace in this case of R2, for, for there to be a solution. <coughs> I may have to draw this thing again. So, uh, so this B is OK. Let's say this one. This is OK. So this is not solvable. And this one is solvable. And you can have you know, something like this. So this is still not solvable. But I want you to just see that this is going to take a long time to get to this. But I want you to see this. We could say, let's take this B and break it into two pieces. Let's take this part of it. We can solve that. We can't get this part. So we can make a sound that sounds, in this case, pretty much like the thing. Or you know, it depends on this. How far, how big this is. But we can, there's a part we can't produce, we can't make that sound, but we could get most of it. So that's going to be a very important thing. So it's an approximation thing. We'll be able to approximate pretty well. But the further B is away from this line, the worse our approximation is. All right. And not, you know, the horrible thing, this is just a two by two example, you know, we could have vectors that are a billion long, right? And uh, hundreds of thousands of them. So we can't see this anymore. All right. Yes. So, so the big deal is this. This is very important. AX equals B um, has a solution. And it could be possibly one or infinitely many. How many solutions does this B have here? The one that's here on the line. Is there one way to make that B or infinitely many? Infinitely many, right? Because we have these two vectors. We, could, we can dial them up and down and get to this point in lots of ways. So there's a redundancy. And that's exactly the way to think of it. There's a redundancy here. You've got two violas. <sighs> All 
possibly one or infinitely many, if and only if, we like to say these things, um, B lives, yes, B lives in A's, what are we going to call it? We'll call it column space. We're going to call it column space. Yes. Great. Hashtag awesome. Um, and we're going to, we'll write this as, we'll write this as, write this magnificent thing as, I'm going to write that out because it's fun to write, magnificent beast as C of A. So it's a space, C for column. All right. Very nice. Lovely. Very good. We have no idea how big it will be. We know column space lives in RM or RN. It's a terribly confusing thing. It's RM, right? So, so always true. CA is a subspace, and it could be all of it, right? Is a subspace. That was a very important of RM, where A is, again, A is M by N. This M. How many rows it has. So how many equate, you know, we go back to the original thing, how many equations you have. Is a subspace. Could be all. Could be all of it. So we're getting this picture. Well, let me do one more example. So let's do one other example. These are ones where you can just kind of see. See what's going on, because they're just two by twos. We're going to have a really great little two by three. It's like the, the platypus of matrices. Just totally great little guy. Uh, we'll, we'll study that to pieces. Okay, so, um, yes, okay. So another example here, A equals 2, 1, 1, 2. That's a nice kind of matrix. It is a, yes, it's a symmetric matrix, which is just extra side joy of symmetry. It's really fine if you see a symmetric matrix to kind of giggle to yourself. That's all right. It's like, you know, that people do with prime numbers and stuff. Okay. All right. That's all right. No one's going to look at you funny. Okay. No one. They can come talk to me, all right? So let's see. So uh, what about this? Column space of this guy. So let's look at a sort of a picture of this. 2, 1. That's 2, 1. That's, uh, this, is, this is A1, right? This character here. First vector. This is Y1, Y2. 1, 2, yes, 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 yes. 1, 2, that's this one. This is A2. Zero is here. Now, these columns, do you think you can make, what do you think you can make with these guys? Adding, like you're allowed to dial back and forth, dial back and forth. Can you get everything in R2? Right, so we can see, again, small example, that A can make everything in R2, right? So there's always a solution to this, always a solution. It's a bit, it's not obvious that there'll be just one solution, but it's true too, maybe not so obvious yet. Who used that chalk? Always a solution, and what we say is the column space of A equals R2, and M equals 2. Right? Right, we need, we will develop, right, we will develop methods for, for determining this. Oh, I'm doing that thing where I write across the board. Oh, determining this. Something horrible happened to the gerund. Ah! Oh. That's a this. 
Right? So it's fine. We can kind of see it here, but we have to work hard to kind of get the whole business out. Right? So any B will work. Pretty cool. We're just doing observational ones. So what about A equals this one? 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Right? So we have two vectors here. A1 equals 1, 0, 0. This is a characteristic of these characters. They, right? So this is M is 3 by 2 tall. Relative. What can you make out of this? What's column space for this? Right, any combination of this vector and this vector. In evil calculus notation, right? This is i hat and j hat. There's no k hat. So in this case, it would be uh, column space would be this thing. Column space would be the xy plane, just to use that notation, in R3. All right, so anything in here, B is good. We can get that guy. This one, nope. We're going to have to figure out how to do this, but that's the intuition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what about this one? 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2. What's the column space for this thing? All right, we've got A1 equals 1, 0, and A2 equals 0, 1, and A3 equals 1, 1. A4 equals 1, 2. Column space lives in... R2 in this case, right? Some combination of 1, 0, combination of 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2. Let's draw a picture of this. Again, Y1, Y2. We have these. These are our, think of them like basis vectors, right? This is A1. A2 is here. A3 is here. Right? This is 1, 1, and then 1, 2. A4. Can you reach all of this space with these vectors, some, multi some combination of these vectors? Yes, right? You only need the first two. We're going to understand this more and more as we go along. But again, we see the column space of A is equal to R2, right? So if we have a B here, all Bs are reachable. So much monologuing. Okay, so these are just, I'm just sort of, I'm, I'm giving you these pictures. We, um, we haven't calculated anything, right? We haven't figured out a method for finding this. But let me show you where we are. So our emerging picture is this. Emerging picture. Is. We start over here, x1, dot, 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 so there's x2, xn. We start from here, and a, this is a times x, right? a sends, x is an element of rn, right? It sends this character over to uh, some beast over here, potentially b1, b2, if you've got a good vector, and, but it's m, just m. And this one is in the column space of A. And this one lives in, right? So this is all of Rn here. We're going to think about that some more. And then there's all of Rm here, right? So column space is itself, and I'll write this notation here. It's an important one. It's a, subs, a subspace of. All right. So that is a good place to get to today. We have our first subspace. It's very meaningful. We're going to unfold 
and unpack A, and we'll find three more hidden inside here. Very, very, very exciting. All right, we're through the, the vector space thing. Go, go, go. Go and have fun. Thank you.